I feel so much better. It's great to have you here. We're going to get started with our first panel. Unfortunately, one of our guests is running a little bit late because of us, because we sent the car a little bit too late. But we've got two out of three guests already here, and the third one is going to join us later. So I'm going to get this party started. Give it up for our two lovely guests, Chris Rankin and Josh Erdman. for the second day in Germany. It's, it's so great to have you here. How, how's your weekend going so far? It's really good, right? Super. Amazing. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. And uh, of course, it's, it's great for us to, you know, we have such a big fandom here in, I want to say Germany, Netherlands, Europe. Basically, the entire world is crazy about Harry Potter. And it's the gift that keeps on giving because we had the films, we had the Fantastic Beasts spin-off, we've had so much in that world, the, the play of course. Um, so we're really happy to see all of you here together. Um, what's it like for you, you know, we talked a little bit about reuniting again uh, with the castmates and now you've spent a few days together. What, what's that like, getting back into, you know, that, I want to say brotherhood maybe even? Well, to be honest, um, me and Chris do so many shows together, and <laughs> getting bored of it now. I know, it's quite, it's quite annoying really, isn't it? <laughs> Um, I saw you like two weeks ago. This is yeah. it's getting a bit much. Wow! It's, uh, <laughs> yeah. He's threatening to come over at Christmas. It's getting a bit. I see you more than my dad. <laughs> oh, wow! That's a lot. I am your father. <laughs> uh, is that still Harry Potter franchise? Or? <laughs> It's all the same thing. Yeah, exactly, exactly. Dark versus evil, good versus bad, big silly wand things, it's the same stuff. Yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so of course we're going to talk about Harry Potter. Um, at the end uh, of the day we had the panel with the characters of Fantastic Beasts and one fan asked a question about, um, you know, the HBO um, TV series reboot that is coming up. Yeah. Uh, I'm not going to ask if you're involved, because obviously if you would be, you still wouldn't be allowed to talk about it. Uh, but would you be interested in revisiting the world of Harry Potter if, if the opportunity came? Or is it something like you said, well, I've done my part and I'm happy, content? Um, and if you would want to return, what kind of character would you like to play? Maybe a professor or a parent or whatever? Well, um, Coyle's dead now, so <laughs> I'll have to come back as a ghost or something, I guess. <laughs> Which would be cool. It happens, right? <laughs> I mean, you Hogwarts uh, ghost. Just, I'll, I'll give Peeves a run yeah. for his <laughs> And not get cut from the film this time. Yeah, <laughs> Peeves did. That's it. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know, it's a funny, it's a funny thing, it, like, somebody asked me yesterday, would you come back and play Percy? I'm like, well, I'm 40 now, so I don't think that's <laughs> likely, um, but, it, yeah, I think it's, if, if it happens the way that it sounds like it's going to happen, I think it's good that it would be a whole new thing, yes. in my opinion, I think you have to start fresh. But it would be quite nice to, you know, be fourth wizard at the Leaky Cauldron for a day or something, you know, like just, just go, oh there he is. Oh yeah, just yeah. to, you know, just yeah. a cheeky little cameo. Yeah, a little cheeky cameo. We had loads of people on, like towards the end of Harry Potter, loads and loads of people came in to do like little random cameo parts. So if you look really closely in the Harry Potter films, there's like, um, Chris Columbus's daughters. Chris Columbus's daughters were in the first few, um, and then uh, in the third one, Ian Brown from. Oh my God, I'm so bad with bands. Oh, just Ian Brown, isn't he? Is it Ian Brown? He was in a band. I can't remember. It, 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 Ian Brown, famous musician, is in the Leaky Cauldron, like stirring his tea with his finger, and then there's somebody, the, the guy from the Kaiser Chiefs, is in the Ministry of Magic. There's like there's loads of these little random. Cameo. So something like that would be quite nice. Yeah. Or maybe a portrait. They don't even have to stand yeah, down and <laughs> sit and sit there. Be great. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Thanks so much. So uh, of course uh, you guys are allowed and, and welcome to ask questions if you have them. Uh, we have a microphone over there and we're going to turn the spotlight on in a few minutes. So get your question in. Um, now you've. 
of course, working on such a big, you know, franchise as Harry Potter means that you got to work with some, I want to say, legendary actors. You know, we've had, of course, Michael Gammon, Alan Rickman, uh, Richard Harris, Robbie Coltrane, just to name a few. Um, what's that experience like as as a kid? Because you know, as a 12, 13 year old, I can imagine you're not necessarily very busy with like, wow, it's you know, it's Gary Oldman or whatever. But still, they're they're huge names, even even in the first film. Yeah, I mean, it was surreal, uh, to be honest. And, you know, I grew up on um, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves, you know, so, yeah, like, one minute, you know, 12, 13 year old, and, you know, putting, putting smoke bombs in ice boxes, <laughs> and, and then the next minute, you're, you're sitting next to Alan Rickman while he has his lunch in the, in the canteen. And that's, yeah, it's surreal, you know. I always felt really um, intimidated, you know. Really? Yeah, not just Alan Rickman, but all, all the, uh, the the big guys. Um, yeah, Starstruck. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, yeah they're from, they're, it's a different, like, they're from a different world. I think most of us had never been in a film or a TV show. We'd never, like, acted professionally before we did Harry Potter, so... These were just, these were literally people that we knew from watching them on the television. And there they were in real life. It, yeah, it was a bit quite scary. And yeah, some of them were really quite scary. To, <laughs> to be, like, I never saw Alan Rickman. I only ever saw Snape. Hmm? Like, and he was always Snape, which was quite scary. Uh, yes, yeah, I can imagine. Yeah. Thank you so much. So let's, uh, let's open the panel. We have a guest. Let's let's invite our final guest on stage first, ladies and gentlemen. Make some noise for the great Tom Felton. There he is. Good dog. How are we? Everything okay? <laughs> Jolly good. <laughs> Tom, welcome to our stage. It's great to have you. And, uh, Thank you very much. Our, our cast is complete for today. Uh, I was just asking the guys about, you know, working uh, and, and basically starting out your career with some of the greats, you know, like Gary Oldman, Richard Harris, all of them. Um, what was that like for you as a kid coming on to Harry Potter, the first film, and being surrounded by Legendary actor is it? Tom, Tom was a seasoned pro. Like. Yeah, Tom, Tom was the film star out of all of us. Yeah, really. Really. Oh, they, they learned from him. Of course, though. <laughs> they did. No, I, but definitely, ironically, uh, as a 11 year old, I didn't know who Gary Oldman was, or Maggie Smith, or Sir Richard Harris, or. The only person I knew was uh, Alan Rickman. His name. <laughs> For you. Uh, because he was in uh, Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Um, so I was always scared of him uh, for a while. But other than that, uh, other than that, I just thought we were just acting with older people, really. Uh, that was about it. <laughs> okay, yeah, fair enough. Fair Some enough. of them were probably the age we are now. That's the terrifying Well, I feel very lucky for that. But don't say that. It's true. It's true. It's true. It's true. <laughs> I feel very lucky because, like, there was no chance to be starstruck because, as an as an eleven year old, twelve year old, whatever, um, how would I know who Gary Oldman is or was? So we got to know them more as people, and um, I learned just I learned more from what they did at offset than what they did on screen sometimes. Um, so I feel very lucky for, for that. This is actually what you were uh, saying yesterday, Chris, like working with the younger actors, etc. But but age was nothing because you were all like this tight family and then you grew up together and Yeah, yeah, so there's the um, there's myself and Sean Biggerstaff who played Oliver Wood, the Gryffindor Quidditch captain, who were that little bit, we were the oldest kids, we yeah. were um, 17 years old when we started filming, whereas these guys were sort of 10, 11, 12 I think, so, but because we were 
because we were all kind of starting as new actors in this world, we were all kind of brought to the, yeah, brought to the same level. Um, although, I, yeah, there's still moments where I'm like, they're definitely 11 years old and I'm definitely not. <laughs> I just remember as well Chris Columbus, the, the director, who essentially cast all, all of us um, in many ways, um, in making it seem like we were always having fun. Yeah. And there was never a work. There was one person, Chris Carreras, first assistant director, who had a whistle. Oh my god, the whistle. And if he blew the whistle, then you were in trouble. <laughs> Otherwise, Chris Columbus made it feel like we were just, um, just having fun. Yeah. Yeah, there was, never, there was never a... You never got to like the end of a take or anything, and it's like, no, it was terrible, do it again. It was always, no, that was great, let's just try something different this time. And you can imitate him. Awesome! That was awesome! awesome. Let's so do that again. Yeah. You used I, the word awesome a lot. I was going to say, I think there was, like, what I heard in one of the interviews on set, that there was a lot of gamification on, on set, like with the red cards and the green cards or something, that you, whenever you... Used swear words or or whatever. Um... Well, it was never a swear word. <laughs> oh, really? The red, the red card system, I believe, was purely implemented because of Rupert Grint, who played yeah. Ron, um, yeah. who uh, he had a problem with the giggles uh... once you start laughing, which brings me neatly to the, the, the uh, transfiguration uh, scene where Josh and I sat next to each other. I had a lizard, and you had a bloody millipede. <laughs> and the millipede was keen to move. And and all we had at our defense were like the wands to sort of try to poke it into, uh, and we definitely messed up a few takes. Uh, Dave Maggie Smith, acting her heart out and you and I just pissing ourselves with love there because the millipede wouldn't stay still. <laughs> um, well, I was actually like petrified. <laughs> yeah. This thing was huge! It was, and when you poked it, it curled, it, like, curled up. And, oh. <laughs> yeah, you can see. <laughs> Thanks so much. So we're going to open up the, uh, the panel for audience questions. Let's uh, turn the spotlight on. Hi. Hello. What was it like to work with Alan Rickman? Sorry, what was it like? What was it like to work with Alan Rickman? With Alan Rickman? Scary at first, because he had a brilliant way of staying in character. Um, I think he was joking half the time, but... Um, I don't think he... Have you read his book? I don't think he was. I, I, <laughs> he, he, he definitely had the genius of when kids came to visit on set. He never was suddenly Alan, he was always a snake. I saw him clip boys around the ear and like, tuck, tuck your shirt in, boy. Whereas whenever I was trying to be friendly with um, kids, it freaked them out even more. They were like, why is, why is Draco being friendly to me? Uh, but yeah, I don't know, what, what were your first experiences of Alan? I remember, I, ne I never met Alan at work. Like, like you say, he was always Snape. And the only time I ever really worked with him was in the Great Hall. And if anybody, has anybody been to the studio tour in London? Yeah? Yeah, cool. So, like, the Great Hall, we had these, like, little sort of escape routes that you could get out through, like, the wooden panelling. But the whole place was surrounded by black cloth to kind of to keep the light in and to everything like that. And when you were taking a break, we'd all go behind there and there was chairs and, like, cups of tea and stuff. But Alan Rickman, because Snape had this, he had black hair and these black cloaks, he would just disappear into the curtains, and all of a sudden he'd be there talking, and all of a sudden you'd be aware that Alan Rickman was just like, Jesus Christ, like, <laughs> terrified. The only time I actually met Alan was, I went to see him when he was doing a play in the West End, and went to see him afterwards, and he was just, like, the sweetest, most lovely guy, but I'd never seen that Alan Rickman before, and it was almost as weird. As meeting Snape, so I was like, "Why are you being nice? What, what is this?" But yeah, he was. Was it like was it method acting, or was that you know Alan Rickman? I think it was. Method. Yeah, I think it was method. Yeah, I think it was a bit of method and a bit of sort of self-present energy saving. To be honest, I think I think he also had the driest sense of yeah. humor. So as a twelve-year-old, 
to understand that he was joking was diff was a bit blurry. Looking back at it, I guarantee you he was taking the piss and yeah. he was like having fun in his own head. But uh, not only Alan being Alan, but he was also dressed like a snake. I mean, he's pretty <laughs> terrifying. Yes. Um, but he, uh, yes, he, he used his energy uh, sparingly and, and pretty much <laughs> was Snape the whole time. But he was also, I just remember for some reason, uh, after many years, it became quicker for us to get lunch brought to us rather than go to the canteen. But Alan would, would be the one he insisted on standing in line so, so you'd have like a grip, a cameraman, an electrician, a goblin, Snape, uh, and back to a painter and just him standing there with his tray waiting for food which um, I, I always thought was a, a nice touch. Yeah, nice quality. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for your question. Thank you so much. You. Yes. Hi. Hi. Could we have your best Harry Potter impression of all of you? And Tom, especially, I will love your Hagrid impression. Will love. So, the last part, what do you love the most? No, uh, Harry Potter impression, imitation. Harry Potter impression. Oh, your best Harry Potter impression. Uh, or from their character, right? Yeah. yeah. Oh, so, from any characters, like. Your, your favorite line and then in character? Uh, honestly, I, I'm so attached to who I played that I don't, I couldn't imagine. I know Josh plays a fantastic Hermione, <laughs> which, he's about, which he's about to show us. Uh, <laughs> but uh, no, I, uh, yeah, I don't have an answer for that, to be honest. Do you know what's funny though is because our impressions would be of the English voices of the actors as well. So, like, because oh, yeah. I know in, I, I've spent quite a lot of time in Germany over the last two years with doing some work things and stuff, and everybody here seems to be obsessed with something that Percy says in German, which is nicht <laughs> wummern. No idea what Not that me. Means. Not me. Me, sorry. It, it, uh, no dawdling. It's a very Percy thing, thing, but yeah, it's like, that's not my voice. That's something that's. It, it's it quite odd, isn't it? The majority of the world of Potter fans don't recognise my voice as Drake. Yeah, it would be someone else's. Um, yeah. <laughs> what's uh, What's your favourite line from the entire franchise? Sorry. What's your favourite line in the entire Harry Potter universe? Uh, in the third film, when Draco is angry about Buck and he just leave calling him bloody chicken. Bloody chicken. <laughs> okay. Bloody <laughs> chicken, yes. <laughs> Thank you so much for your question. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you. Bye. Hi, everyone. Yes, hello. So, I have a question for Tom. Mm -hmm. uh, three years ago, Draco Talk was a widely popular trend in TikTok. Can you tell us something about it, about your reaction on it? And uh, what do you think, if we could bring Draco Talk back on trends again right now, what song uh, for the video will be perfect to start with? Uh, I feel like that was five questions in one. Um, <laughs> so, well, I'm a very simple uh, idiot. What, what was the f first one, or main one? Like, Is this Winnie Draco? Yes. Can you say that? Oh, okay. Oh, he just, just tripped over. Crikey. Um, sorry. So your... the first one was Give me the uh, about, about your reaction uh, for Drake Talk. Like, this was a popular trend in TikTok. Oh, TikTok. right. Yes, yes. yes. Uh, I have no idea. Um, I, I was made aware of it uh, much like long after it became a thing. Um, I think it's something to do with sympathizing or empathizing with um, a character that probably wasn't evil at heart, but he didn't have many choices. Um, other than that, I will let your imaginations fill the gaps. <laughs> yeah. And the second question was, 
Like, if we can bring Drake Atok on trend back, what song will be perfect start with? Uh, what song? I don't. I, which, whatever you want, I don't mind. Uh, what, which one did you choose? Was Drake Atok part of music? Is it a music thing? Yes. No, just, yeah. Like, you're a musician. Can you bring one song, like, choose one song? Oh, uh, Tom and Draco are two different. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I have not written any songs in the mindset of Draco, so that would be uh, difficult to answer. Yeah, I think there are a lot of moods that Draco had along the show, so a lot of songs uh, yeah. that okay. go with it. Thank you for yeah, your question. Thank you, thank you so thank much. You so much. Josh motherfudging Herbert. <laughs> uh, he, um, uh, is, is absolutely genuine. I used to make lots of uh, beats, uh, instrumentals in my trailer uh, on my laptop. We even recorded songs um, in lunch breaks, Crab, Goyle, and Draco together, and um, Josh. Uh, I had never rapped before, never uh, tried rapping before, um, but listening and working with Josh gave me a lot of inspiration and made me feel like I, um, I, I could do it. I still listen to the songs to the day, <laughs> and I still send them to him <laughs> and to remind him. So uh, that was the first one. Guitar-wise, um, Jack Johnson. And of course, um, a small band, uh, the Beatles. I don't know if you heard of them. Yes. Yes. Those are my big influences in life. Thank you for your question. Thank you for answering. Thank you. I can uh, I can imagine like you guys spent so much time on set. Of course, uh, shooting one film would, would take I think 150 to 200 days uh, in total. Um, so you needed to pass time a lot. So music was was one of the things. What what other things did you do to pass time on such a you know busy and long set environment? Yeah, I mean um, me, me, Tom, and Jamie kind of. I mean, I remember Tom. You you showed me Limp Bizkit and Soulfly, and I still listen to Soulfly to this day. Um, and I've never known like heavy metal or rock music. Because when I was when I got into Harry Potter, when I was in school, you had rude boys and grungers, um, and the grungers were skaters who liked rock music, and I sort of went more towards the rude boys, um, listening to garage and rap and stuff. Um, but the yeah, me, me Tom and Jamie, we just, we just shared. We all had similar um, taste in music, basically. It was quite ironic and, brilliant and delightfully pleasant that Josh, Josh, Jamie and I were all into... Uh, we were all passionate about well, music, I think, first of all. Um, and then passionate about getting into um, trouble, shall we say. Uh, so yeah, it was a happy, happy mixture of all three, I think. Yeah, I think I think music was definitely a big part of everybody's past. I know um, Sean, B, Sean Biggerstaff and I, again being the sort of the two older ones, spent quite a lot of time together, and he spent quite a lot of time trying to impart his musical taste on me, and a lot of time trying to stop me from imparting my musical taste on him, uh, because my musical taste at the time, and quite a lot still, was very much musical theatre. That was my thing, which still kind of is. And I'd be going, have you listened to this amazing show, Rent? And he'd be like, please, God, make it stop. <laughs> Listen to this really interesting band called They Might Be Giants instead, which was something I learned from Sean. But yeah, yeah, I think music was the kind of universal language of what the hell do we do when we're not filming? But I had the luxury of not having to go to school, and like, these younger kids, so, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much. Hi! Passion. Hello. 
Um, so a year ago, I asked the same question to Rupert Grint and Jason Isaacs, but um, if you could choose any job in the wizarding world, which one would it be? If you could choose any job in any the job. wizarding world, yeah. which one would you choose? As the character or as the person they are? That doesn't matter. As the person they are. All right. I'm whining. <laughs> no, I don't. Did I? Did Draco have a job? Is that what she's asking? A yeah, job. so what, the what job, job the what profession you would have in the wizard of world. What jobs were they? <laughs> well, they like the Ministry of Science, Ministry of Magic, yeah. Yeah. I don't know, pub in Oxford, I don't know. Uh, I'll just go with Death Eater. <laughs> <laughs> a Death Eater, is that a salaried position? I don't think so. Does that come with a... Pension <laughs> scheme is terrible. <laughs> Your Death insurance is, is a great right. word, so that would work, I think. Yeah, I don't think I would have a job. I'd be the sort of like <laughs> inmate, a serious back type of character. Yeah. I think. Would, um, would Percy revisit Hogwarts as a professor or something? I mean, per Percy, I, last I'm aware of, has a job at the Ministry of Magic, which is probably something that I would do. I don't know. Yeah, something like that. Classic would Weasley. Like, classic, yeah, classic, classic Percy. Percy. Admin. <laughs> Thank HR. you so much for your question. <laughs> Thank you. Hi. Hello. Um, if you have the opportunity to play any other role in the Harry Potter franchise, which would it be? Hermione. <laughs> Draco. Bellatrix Lestrange. It's <laughs> a great That's part, I think. Not it's a great part. part. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Can you, sorry, can you speak a little closer in the, yeah. into the microphone? Uh, imagine you would have never auditioned for Harry Potter. What do you think, where would you be today? Like, would your life be any different? If they had an audition for Harry Potter? Have never. If you never had auditioned for Harry Potter, what would your life look like today? That's a very deep question, I think, like very, uh... <laughs> well, no, obviously no one can answer that, but, um... Uh, I def I certainly feel on my behalf, I was purely, I, I auditioned for Harry, not Hermione, uh, <laughs> from uh, they dyed my hair brown, they dyed my hair ginger, they eventually dyed my hair blonde. I was in the right place at the right time, and I looked like the character that Draco, um, they had pictured. That was it. Uh, there's no, like, I, I didn't go to any acting school or anything like that. So, uh, I like to think that if it wasn't for um, Potter, I would be in the creative industry, some way, shape or form, um, probably behind the camera. Um, Josh, what about you? Um, well, I was, like, making really rubbish um, short films from probably about 10. Um, I used to use my dad's VHS cam camcorder and it was just like, there was no storyline, there would just be like random fights and stuff. Um, so I, I knew pretty um, early on that I would be in, in the industry. Um, and yeah, I, th I think I, I would still be in the, in, in the industry, but probably behind the camera. Well, we made a couple ourselves. This is a story that I should definitely not share. <laughs> but we but. once, we once, <laughs> yeah, we once had a uh, like a cap gun, uh, a, a fake cap. gun. Well, I, I, I'm putting it like it, it was a, a fake gun, a fake gun that that as kids we were like, wow, this is really cool. Um, we were in Newcastle and we were looking for a place to. Uh, I. I video camera this, I wish I had the footage still. We were looking for a good place to test it. It was a, de it was a Des Eagle, wasn't it? But it was a, I think it was a Britta. It was, yeah. And so we went to the bottom of a seven layer uh, car park. <laughs> and um, within one pull of this fake gun's uh, trigger, I've never heard a noise so loud. Possibly the most Slytherin thing we've ever done, and the most stupid. Uh, <laughs> Rankin save us, uh, help us out. Yes. Newcastle was like, that was early on in filming though. Yeah. That was like, 
week one. Wow. It was a bad idea then. <laughs> it was a bad idea now. <laughs> I forgot what the question Oh, what will we be doing the other zone? Um, I mean, yeah, I think also something in the world of show business. I was like, when, once I discovered that I really loved acting and performing, that was definitely where I was going. My, I, I think I would have probably gone to drama school and tried to be an actor and probably ended up following my parents into probably teaching and been a drama teacher. Or, you know, I, I feel like that's probably where it would have gone. Um, but yeah, definitely something showing off. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Thank you so much for your question. Thank you. Thanks. Um, look at that. We have one or though. two more minutes left, so let's see if we can try and get these questions in. I will be fast. <laughs> okay, so. so, hi, first of all. Um, my question is if you have any projects you want to work on in the future. Uh, do you have any projects coming up that you can share a little bit about, maybe? Um, well, I think, I think, sorry, somewhere down the line there's a, there's a um, fight to the death between me and Tom Felton about who's going to play King George in, in Hamilton at some point. But... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know anything about that. I wouldn't take you on, honestly. Um, uh, I'm, I'm hoping to actually do, I'm, I'm not, not versed in musical theatre, but to do more, um, more theatre next year and um, current, currently working on a, on a film called Project Darwin, which will be out uh, next year, I think. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi. 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 We ain't had a question, but I wanted to introduce it to you. Sorry, can you speak it? Ah, a question for our little friend. The room, no. And they just wanted to say hi to you. That's all. Oh, wanted to say hi. Give it up for a little friend. No. That's something very good. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay, yeah, I thought you had a question, sorry. Um, all right, so unfortunately we're out of time, but, but uh, I'm glad to have all of you here uh, for the rest of the day. So if you still have questions, make sure you go to the signing table while getting your signature, you can get your question in. Guys, I wanna wish you uh, a lot of fun today for the rest of the day and Tom, we're going to see you back on stage in a few hours, going to have some fun. So, And uh, uh, um, just, just quickly, on behalf of all the cast and crew, I'm pretty sure that we can say how grateful we are of all the support over the years absolutely, of the yeah. Wizarding World and uh, Potter Universe. So, thanks.